What an amazing view! And we can even see some Kohomasaurs here and there! Hey, why don't we try to get a picture with one or two of them in the wild? Well, they're so cute! They probably won't do that! Right? Huh? What's happening over there? and this is my senior Brahmdra. Thank you so much for saving us. I was a little too close. Don't mention it! Handling these sort of things is practically second nature to us by now. Uh, Paimon is Paimon, and this is the Traveler! Still, it seems that all the Koholosaurs just ran off. We need to capture at least one alive. Uh, capture one alive? Correct. Say... I can see you are very skilled at dealing with them. Do you think you could use me as live bait to help us capture one? I will pay you for the efforts. Uh, well... Apologies. Varandra has been hyper-focused on his research. So please, don't be too hard on him. Oh, no worries. But why did you approach a whole group of wild Koholosaurs, and what's this talk about capturing them? Uh, Paimon's pretty sure that's not what they're trying to do. I'm sure we must look very silly. The fact of the matter is that we're searching for a mysterious island from a certain legend. It's said that a very important clue about the island can be found on Koholosaurus, so... Approaching them without the help of a guide from the people of the Springs was certainly an unwise choice on our part. A mysterious island? Yes. There is a legend from the people of the Springs that mentions a mysterious island, and Vranja believes the key to his research can be found there. Ahem. <clears throat> Are you certain you two won't consider my proposal to capture one? Some proposal? There's no way we'd be willing to use a person as live bait! Then I suppose discussing it any further will just be a waste of time. I must come up with another solution. <clears throat> Varamdra! Oh, all right. You did rescue Karia and I just now, and I suppose I should express some gratitude. Thank you very much. A little awkward, but Paimon will take it. We should move on, Karia. Yes, thank you again. My apologies. Paramja really doesn't have the best people skills. That's all right. Bye now.
You really don't see a pair of adventurers like those two every day. But anyway, Paimon's really curious about that mysterious island that lady just mentioned. Yeah, who knows? There might be treasure! After all, the amazing places we've explored during our adventures, finding some mysterious island should be a walk in the park for us. Oh, you're right. The lady mentioned that the mysterious island is related to a legend of the people of the springs. So maybe we can start by asking some of them about it. Time's ticking, let's get started on our next event. But the real question is, who should we ask? Hmm, that's an idea. If anyone, the chief of the tribe should know the detail. The Traveler and his companion. So what brings you here? Do you need help with anything? We want to visit the Mysterious Island. Hmm, the Mysterious Island, huh? Um, is there something wrong? I'm assuming you two are already aware that this island is related to a legend of my people. Yeah, but... Now that you mention it, we don't know anything about the actual legend yet. <laughs> then allow me to explain it to you two. It is said that the first chief of the people of the Springs was the most outstanding guide in all of Natlan. He discovered many deserted domains and found countless treasures. But to prove himself once more, he embarked on yet another journey in search of a legendary mysterious island he endured many hardships along the way, but he persevered and managed to reach the destination. The island emits a golden light where countless treasures are buried. But instead of claiming the treasures for himself, he left behind a trail of clues that lead to the island. Since then, many people from later generations have undertaken the challenge of finding the island. After all, to find the island is to find riches and glory. Oh, that makes sense. So could you tell us how to get to that island? Oh, oh Paimon gets it. This is like a big secret for the people of the spring, so you can't just tell anyone, right? On the contrary, it's quite the opposite. The legend and the clues needed to find the island are all already known to the public. Oh! Well, then what's the problem? Well, I'm willing to answer your question in exchange for a favor. What do you think? Sure thing! But what do you need us to do? <laughs> then you have my thanks. Allow me to tell you some details. I'll be honest, there are some among the tribe who are of rather... base character. Not long ago, I received a report that a few of them were working together to scam visitors. As the chief of the tribe, I was very ashamed to hear of this. It's really hard to believe that could happen. They are targeting tourists who wish to visit that island. According to my sources, they would trick tourists into believing they are trustworthy guides before luring the tourists into spending a fortune for the sake of reaching the island. They run a pretty sophisticated operation. They would always claim the scammed money is some kind of legal travel expenditure, so it's hard to use that to directly convict them. So, I was hoping to find someone who could approach them and pretend to get scammed. Doing so would allow us to gather the evidence required to bring them to justice. The problem is, they would certainly recognize anyone associated with me. 
which is why I haven't been able to carry out the plan yet. Oh, Paimon understands now. We're the perfect bait because we're both tourists. Exactly. And as far as I know, you two are no pushovers. No matter what nefarious schemes they may come up with, you'll be perfectly capable of protecting yourselves, right? You betcha. If it's just a few scammers we're talking about, he'll take them all down. <laughs> Wonderful. Then here, please take this. Uh, whoa, uh, that's a lot of aura. Did we already earn a bonus? There will be plenty of rewards if you manage to catch those scoundrels. This mora, however, is for other purposes. I'm sure some spending will be required on your part before they lower their guard. I certainly wouldn't expect you to pay out of your own pockets. So please use the mora as needed and collect as much evidence as possible. No wonder you're the chief. Seems like you've already thought of everything. Okay, we'll take it from here. <laughs> I've marked the location of the scammers on your map. I'll leave the rest to you two. Right. We should pretend we are innocent tourists with no idea about what's going on. Uh, but how should we lure those scammers out? Good idea. Speaking of which, Paimon's dying to know what kind of treasures could be buried on the mysterious island. Wonder if anyone's ever really seen them before. Ah! Are you two visitors from afar looking to visit the mysterious island? We managed to lure them out already. <clears throat> oh, pardon. Is something the matter? I just happened to overhear you two talking about the mysterious island. I assume you two must be tourists, brought here by the legend and looking for the island. Am I right? Hello, Paimon is Paimon and this is the Traveler. That's right. We were just getting ready to look for that island from the legend. In that case, as a qualified guide, I certainly cannot allow you to embark on such a dangerous journey. Uh-huh. As the legend says, if you can manage to reach the mysterious island, riches and glory will be yours for the taking. Be that as it may, the journey to the island is full of untold perils and dangers. It would be nigh impossible for any average person to reach the island. But you are in luck. Allow me to tell you the purpose of our services. It just so happens that our mission as guides is to help visitors avoid danger, find shortcuts, and successfully reach their destination. Um... Please, there's no need to worry. This was just one point I had to make perfectly clear. Although the legend and the clues to finding the island are known to everyone, the leads left behind by our ancestors are as enigmatic as riddles found on a lost treasure map. Only guides bestowed with the legacy of our ancestors can correctly decipher the clues. Tourists who rashly embark on their own often wind up lost and encounter unnecessary dangers. Huh. He actually sounds pretty convincing. But it seems like fate has brought us together. So, what say you to having me as your guide? Uh, so how much would- Not to worry. 
I don't intend. So you'd be working for free? For us, people of the springs, guiding guests to the mysterious island is a great honor in and of itself. Worth more than any amount of Mora. Smooth. Iman almost wants to believe him. All right, thank you. Then please, guide us on- Of course. Please, follow me. here to take pictures with the Koholosaurs? Really? Can we? Ahem. Huh? Oh, you two must be here to seek insight from Atta, right? Um, Atta? Insight? Shh, not so loud. Openly saying their name in such a manner will only cause them to loathe you. Ah, I apologize for not explaining earlier. As you can see, Atta is the elder Koholosaur. My senior here is Atta is highly respected among the tribe and is far more knowledgeable than other Koholosaurs. They say that Atta has actually visited the mysterious island before. Therefore, we must rely on Atta's insight to know how to get there. Really? But how do we do that? Can a Koholosaurus elder Talk? You need only slowly approach Atta. Once Atta has confirmed your scent, they will provide their wise insight. In the language of the Koholosaurs, of course. But no need to worry. The ability to interpret this language is one of the basic skills required of a guide from the people of the Springs. I can understand Atta's instructions and will lead you on the journey ahead. All right, then let's give it a try. <clears throat> That'll be 10,000 mora per person. Huh? Uh, in order for Atta to give us insight, they must recall their past, which can be extremely taxing for a Koholosaur. Cost to maintain their health can be quite high, you know. I'm sorry. Such expenses may arise in the process of finding our way, but as long as we reach the mysterious island, these costs will be quite trivial in the end. There you have it. Paimon knew there was no such thing as a free lunch. Oh, Paimon has an idea. She bets they've just made up all that stuff about the talking Koholosaur. But if we can get a receipt, that'll be proof that they're scamming tourists. With that kind of evidence, there'll be no doubt they're guilty. <sighs> What's taking them so long? Well, what do you say? I'll even throw in a group photo of you two with Atta. You won't ever find another deal like this. Oh, that's an unexpected bonus. Quick, let's pay the man! Whoa, Atta really didn't try to bite us at all. You can also pose now if you'd like a photo together. Okay! <laughs> oh, Atta is already speaking. Let me listen to what they have to say. Hmm. Could you really get anything from that noise? Of course. Like I said, only a guide like me can understand their language. 
Let's follow Otta's instructions and proceed to the next area. Here's your group photo. I even packaged it up for free. Any chance we could get a receipt for that? No problem at all. Here you go. <laughs> Please, come with me. We still have a lot of the Chief's more to use. Why don't we keep up the act and gather some more evidence? <laughs> Paimon's curious what other tricks these scammers are using. These guys are going way too far. He keeps coming up with some far-fetched reasons to make us pay for everything. With all the evidence we have now, we could bring him straight to the Chief and he'd definitely be convicted. But after handing over all that Mora, Paimon kind of wants to see if he'll actually take us to the island or not. Sorry to keep you waiting. After all the clues we've gathered, I've managed to find a shortcut to the island. Oh, all right, then let's get going. Time to go. This is the spot. The trails of sunlight will guide the way. Once you cross the rushing water, the light of the setting sun shall reveal everything. Atta's insights have already pointed us to the destination. It's just on the opposite bank. You mean, we're almost there? Huh. But there wasn't even any exciting about this journey. As I said before, this is a shortcut. If I took you on some arduous path after all the mora you spent, that wouldn't make me look like a good guide, don't you think? Anyway, there's no time to lose. We need to get there before sunset. Time to go. According to Otta's insights, this is the place. We're here. Uh, you mean the mysterious island? Yes, I've led you to the island just as I promised, which means it's time for me to say goodbye. Hold on! Are you serious? This is supposed to be the island? Then what about the treasure? And look at these wooden signs and artificial lights! Tell it's fake. All that stuff about treasure is just part of the legend. I didn't make any promises about what you'd find. And who says a mysterious island can't look like this? Huh. Since you seem to have dropped the act, then there's no need for us to continue. I we were commissioned by the chief of the people of the springs to gather evidence of your scamming activities. With these receipts, your scamming days are over. <laughs> You sure? Then what's written? Huh. Let's see. I took you all this way just to buy enough time for the handwriting to disappear. Even if you were to go back to the people you paid, you'd only find that they were using fake names, making them impossible to track down. You want to report me for scamming tourists? Then be my guest. I'll just say that I'm being falsely accused. With that settled, I'll be going now. It's the chief! What's the chief doing here? I have dispatched others to secretly trail you. Thanks to you, we can finally convict him of scamming people. Convict me? How? They don't have any evidence against me. Even as the chief, you can't just level accusations without any evidence, right? Sorry to say it, but he got us. Not to worry. Let's search him first. Hey, what are you doing? Keep your hands off me! Yes, I see the mark. Looks like you already split the Mora before you led them here. What 
do you mean? The mora that the Traveler and Paimon were using today were all provided by me. They all have a special mark on them. You... So, there must be an explanation why the mora that should have been theirs ended up in your hands, right? There are no receipts to prove that any transactions took place, and you yourself just denied that there was a scam. So did you then take the Mora from them by force? Take Mora from others by force? Oh, that's an even more serious crime than scamming! Uh, you... you... Ugh. All right. Sure, I admit that I coaxed them into spending a few times, but I wouldn't go as far as calling it sc We have witnesses standing right here, you know. Fine. Yes, it was all a scam. Woohoo! No wonder you're the chief of the tribe! <sighs> I still don't understand how so many people have been getting duped by them. You need only stop and think for a moment to see through the whole thing. If he claims to be able to find a shortcut to the mysterious island, then why hasn't he just gone there and claimed the treasure for himself? Why even bother guiding others there? That's a good point. Speaking of, have any guides from the people of the springs ever found the treasure of the mysterious island? I can answer this question along with your previous one about how to get there. The answer is actually very simple. There is no shortcut to the island. And most people don't even meet the requirement to ever re- If you don't meet this single condition, then even guides from the people of the springs, despite all of their abilities, will find it difficult to overcome the obstacles along the way. Which is exactly why, even though the clues to the mysterious island are open to the public, few have ever made it there. There's a requirement? What is it? ask you something first. What do you think a real journey to the mysterious island should be like? I... Uh, it should probably involve... overcoming a lot of hardships with your companions, before witnessing some breathtaking sights, uh, uncovering a really touching story, oh, and scoring some super cool treasure at the end. And therein lies the key point. Overcoming hardships with your companions. It's said that when the first chief set out to search for the island, the ones who accompanied him were not clients, nor tourists, but his closest friends. The legend also mentioned that only those willing to entrust their lives to one another will be able to reach the island together. Therefore, the requirement to reach the island is journeying with your closest friends, the kind of friends you would trust with your life. So that's the key. From what I can see, you and Paimon are exactly those kinds of friends. The kind that would trust each other with anything. But unfortunately, neither of you are experienced guides. And if you were to hire someone else, then I'm afraid you could probably never place your lives in the hands of someone you met on a pure monetary basis. That's true. But don't feel discouraged. I believe that this beautiful land that I call my home will not disappoint you. Whether it's remote islands or ancient ruins, I'm sure they can also provide you with plenty of exciting adventures. And let me tell you a secret. The elders once told me that beneath these very ruins lies a way to reach the sky. Yeah, thanks for that. But knowing us, we don't give up so easily even when a place is supposedly impossible to visit. Oh, I can understand. I won't stop you if you're still interested in finding the island. I just recommend finding a guide first who you could trust with your lives. A guide we could trust with their lives? Oh, who knows when we'll meet someone like that around here. Oh, we could go find more Lani! It appears you've already made up your minds. Then, I'll be taking my leave. My assistants will pay you for all your help. Thanks again. Okay, bye-bye! Thank you. 
black swimming floaters here. Uh, but why? Black floaters look really cool. Hmm. Uh, may I ask whether you've had some bad luck lately? Uh, well, yeah, sorta. The last pair of black floaters I bought ended up getting bitten by Koholosaur. I nearly drowned. Which is why I want to buy some new ones. I knew it. I specifically asked an expert from the Masters of the Nightwind about this once. Black floaters bring bad luck. R really? Also, have you by any chance become a mosquito magnet? Or found yourself overheating? Maybe even suffering a little heat stroke? Yeah, that's exactly how I've been feeling. It's all starting to make sense now. In that case, I'd recommend either pink or blue swimming floaters. According to the experts, bright colors can not only lift your mood, but also bring good luck. I'll even offer you a discount if you'd like. Just see it as a way of celebrating your luck taking a turn for the better. You'd really do that? Then I'll take one of each. You got it. Isn't the traveler and in... it's been a while, Mulani? Was all that stuff you were saying just now really true? Do pink and blue floaters really bring good luck? Of course. I know a friend who nearly drowned once, but because she was wearing blue floaters, a group of Koholosaurs came to the rescue and brought her back to shore. Whoa, for real? But let's get back to why you're here. Are you looking to buy some water sports products? Come on, don't be strangers now. I can give you whatever you need. You are guests here, after all. It's only natural for me to give some gifts to you. No, no, we actually came here to ask you to be our guide. Well, you've come to the right person. So, where do you want to go? We want to visit the mysterious island from the legend. A trip to the mysterious island? Oh. Do you have any concerns, Mom? I assume you're already aware of how difficult the trip will be. Right? Yep, your chief has already made that pretty clear. But with our adventuring experience and with you as our guide, we'll definitely be able to reach the mysterious island. Then I'll have to explain some things to you first. I learned all my skills as a guide from Uncle New, and he's the best guide in the whole tribe. But apparently, even he has never successfully reached the island. With a good guide to lead the way, a journey should usually be fun and pleasant. However, going to the mysterious island is different, and I don't know if I can guarantee that. But since it's you two asking, I definitely won't refuse. It's just my duty as a guide to explain these things before I officially agree to go on the journey. Paimon thought this would be a piece of cake for you, but it seems like we're actually asking a lot. Uh, Paimon will feel really guilty to make a friend go through a bunch of trouble just for the sake of finding some treasure. Uh, Mulani? Whoa, what's the hurry? Come on, what are you waiting for? Kolo just got back to the tribe. I heard he found another underground ruin full of treasure. Oh, Kolo's back. Wait for me. Who's Kolo? Oh, he's currently ranked as the number one guide in the People of the Springs. Besides the tribe's first chief, He's the only other guide who's ever made it to the mysterious island. Really? He's always out and about, so we don't get to see him often. Sounds like this is quite an occasion, though. Let's go check it out. Uh, let me put up the closed sign first. Okay, come with... The crystals you asked for can only be found in caverns deeper than 500 meters underground. Here, have a look for yourself. As for the people you asked me to take along, they almost all got lost in a cave. Out of my sense of duty as a guide, I brought them all back. Next time, just save the trouble and let me go alone. Indeed, well done. No wonder he's the best. 
I wouldn't dare to go more than 200 meters down into a cavern like that. I wonder how much he made this time. Whoa, he really does sound like a super amazing guide. Do you think you could get some pointers from him, Mulani? Who knows, maybe he could save us some trouble on our trip to the mysterious island. Ko'olo always treats his experience like trade secrets. He never tells anyone anything about being a guide. Oh, okay. But one day, I'll also be able to reach the island. That's him, right? Do you really think you'll be able to get his help? Allow me to do the talking. <clears throat> you must be the top guide of your tribe. I have a commission that I hope you'd be willing to consider. Hmm, that guy sure looks familiar. Oh, aren't those two the scholars from Sumeru who are bitten by the Koholosaurs? They also wanted to go to the mysterious island, right? Seems they finally realized that they need a guide. A commission? Since you've obviously heard about my abilities, have you also happened to hear about my rates? If you're not intimidated by the price, then we can talk. Yes, I've looked into everything I need to know. As long as the trip is a success, then the commission fees won't be a problem. Oh? And where is it you want to go? The mysterious island. Just as Paimon thought. But first, please don't misunderstand. I'm no tourist. I wish to visit the real place. You hear that? He wants to go to the island. In that case, Ko'olo's the only one for the job. But the journey to the island requires a lot more than just a guide, right? Since you want to visit the real mysterious island, then I'm sure you've also heard about the requirement for our trip, right? Yes, I know. According to the legend, only those who are willing to entrust their lives to one another will be- I must reach that island, even if that means putting my life in someone else's hands. I have made up my mind. Don't waste your words on me. The way I see it, the requirement is just a way to weed out those who do not have the skills to reach the island by themselves. Y you <laughs> You say you'd put your life in somebody else's hands? <laughs> Ridiculous. Even if someone were to trust me with their life, they'd just be another burden. Let's look at it the other way around. Why would I place my life in the hands of someone whose abilities are far below mine? That is what the legend is really hinting at here. Many guides in the tribe have received commissions like this, only to end up bogged down by their incompetent clients long before reaching the destination. How do you think I reached the mysterious island? I made it because I chose to go a Well, um, I'm- That doesn't make much of a difference to me. You'll give up halfway at best, which is a waste of my time. And a waste of your commission fees. I can tell you're just looking to explore something new. If that's the case, then you can find another guide in the tribe. For example... New student, over there. What's up with that guy's attitude? Paimon takes back everything nice she said about him! I have things to do now. Goodbye. Hold on, Ko'olo! What's wrong? I'm only introducing a potential client to you because I know you're a teacher. In fact, I'd say it's quite the opportunity. Never mind that for now. I don't agree with your views on the island. Uncle New taught me that... I know. You're just the same as him. You both obviously hope to prove yourselves, but still think that you have to follow the legend to the letter. Waiting for a cumbersome client to find you before even trying to set off. The rare ores I brought back are proof that I've been to the island. But as for New, where's his proof? Why don't you wait until he's actually found the island before you start using his views to refute me? I'm really sorry. I just wanted to take you to see what the excitement was all about. I wasn't planning on getting into an argument with him again. That Kolo seemed to harbor some kind of grudge against you, Mulani. Or maybe your teacher. I know. Quite an impressive achievement for my teacher, huh? Even the best guide in the tribe can't stop talking about him. Oh, Paima thought you'd be more upset. Of course not. Uncle Nu has also argued with Ko'olo before. I've already heard the same words several times now. But it's hard to prove anything to him unless you've actually been to the island. That's right. It's just that I've always seen the journey as something super important and not to be taken lightly. 
I was really surprised when you asked me to be your guide today. Uh, after telling you about all the dangers with such a serious face, I didn't make you think that you're causing me trouble, did I? Actually, Bymon did think about taking our invite back. No, please don't do that. Actually, that is also a part of what Uncle New taught me as a guide. The difficulty of the trip is the very first thing that needs to be clearly laid out to the group. <clears throat> if you want a chance of reaching the destination together, you must first reach a consensus on the amount of effort that will be required. I always felt that my teacher is no less skilled than Ko'olo. But Uncle Nu has never been to the island, so Ko'olo always uses that to push us down. So, as Uncle Nu's student, I've always wanted to complete the trip to prove his skills. It's a pity that I've never had the chance. But don't you have that chance now, Mulani? If you, with the help of the renowned traveler and his trusty companion, you'll definitely be able to find the mysterious island. Then you can come back and teach that Koalo a lesson. <laughs> oh, Paimon. Come on, bring it in. Aw, you're making Paimon blush. <sighs> Alrighty then. If we're gonna go, we should start preparing right away. I've already had the plans for this trip written out for some time. Come with me. <clears throat> oh, it's that scholar guy. Paimon almost forgot he was still here. Scholar guy? My name is Varamdra. Please use it. I, I didn't expect to see you again, Traveler and Paimon. Oh, and it's that lady too. Excuse me, Miss Guide. Since we've been referred to you, would it be okay for us to join your journey? I'm Mualani. Just call me by my name. As for whether or not you can come along, uh, I'm sure you've already heard the requirements. We've only just met, and I'm not sure you're cut out for this trip. The path to the mysterious island is a grueling one. Oh... I admit that after coming to Natlan, I've encountered many things outside of my field of expertise. It's understandable you're worried that we'll slow you down. So how about this? We'll set off with you as ordinary travel companions, and I'll pay you the usual commission fees. But we won't officially be your clients. In other words, you needn't shoulder the responsibility of being our guide. And even if something were to happen to us, your reputation as a guide won't be tarnished as a result. How does that sound? If you accompany us, then you are a member of the team. I could never agree to such a careless deal. <laughs> oh, don't tell me you think I'm the same kind of person as Ko'olo. So you still refuse? Fine. Kari, I'll put the more for the return trip in your backpack. Without a guide, the road ahead may be dangerous, so please don't follow me. Varandra? Now he wants to go alone? Why is this guy so obsessed with that island? Wait! <sighs> Please don't do this in front of a guide. I can't let a tourist go on some dangerous journey all alone. Even my sweet mom would give me a harsh scolding if I ever let you do that. I'm so sorry. Don't say that. Although it'd be inappropriate to bring along two strangers I just met, there is another solution. How about this? Let's meet up tomorrow morning at the monument near the tribe's southeastern slope. I'll see you there. So you've decided to accept my offer? No. My plan is to use some of our time together to turn you from strangers into friends. The kind we can trust with our lives. That's your plan? Wonderful. On behalf of both Barandra and I, thank you so much. Pretty sure only Mualani could come up with a plan like that. We need to get started on our preparations. Come with me. Time to go. Time to go. Time to go. Hey, Alafa. I've got some business for you. Oh, 
We've been over this before. The name's Yelifath. I know. It's just that Laffa sounds so much cuter. Well, since you're the customer here, I guess whatever floats your boat. I need a camping tent with all the accessories. Only the best you've got. Another commission, huh? Just so you know, a full tent according to your standards is gonna be pricey. Is your client covering the bill? Uh, how much are we talking? Don't worry about the costs. I'll take care of it. Oh, but that's not right. Ahem. Let's make this clear, Traveler and Paimon. Oh, no. We're traveling as close friends who trust each other with anything. That's what I thought. Honestly, I can be a little picky when it comes to camping equipment, and I don't want my friends to be paying for me. But don't worry, it's not that expensive. We're ready, Laffa. Your total is 200,000 mora. Isn't that still a lot for you, Moolani? Just imagine us in the wilderness, okay? We can either sleep out in the open, tired and weary, or simply spend a week's worth of pocket money and completely solve that problem. I'd say that's a great deal. You call that a week's worth of pocket money? Are you rich, Mulani? That's not important. We still need to buy some equipment from another store. Come with me. You call me uncle, but I'm old enough to be your grandfather, you know. <laughs> because you're still young, Uncle An. Hey, can you help me find something kind of rare? I can negotiate the price. What do you say? All right. What are you looking for? A record player. Specifically, the kind that's convenient to take camping. Oh, that model is pretty rare indeed. I thought it'd be nice to keep it as a prized collectible in the shop. Uncle On. <coughs> uh, just don't break it, okay? I'll even buy it back from you when you're done with it. Thanks, Uncle On. A record player? Does that mean we need to buy some records, too? Yep. And that's our next stop. Hey, Paka Paka. Muwalani? Have you finally decided to release a record of your own? You'd be the first I'd sign with if I ever did, but not today. I just want to buy a record. The one you've been- Uh-huh. Uh, that's a pretty rare record, you know. Besides, I haven't even finished listening to that one yet. Maybe I can think of a way to connect you with a friend from the Masters of the Night Wind to release a record. Whoa. Then we could produce some really wild tunes. You've got a deal. Nice. That's the record also accounted for. What do we need it for anyway? Well, I asked a friend from the Masters of the Night Wind for some advice once, and apparently, playing this song at night is an effective way to keep travelers safe and sound. Is that really a thing? Well, if it doesn't cost much, that's Nice way to make the trip a little more pleasant. You know how it goes, Muolani. 20,000 mora for this record. That's the best deal. Looks like Mulani really is rich. That should be about everything we need to buy. Next is. Ooh. What's wrong, Muolani? Next, I need to find my teacher and get the map to the island. Besides the legend left by the first chief, there's also a map. Well, not just a regular map, it's more like a treasure map. It's full of strange symbols, almost like it's a part of a big puzzle. Guides must draw from their experience to decipher the map's meaning and understand the route. The chief made several copies of the map and distributed them to the first members of the tribe. The copies were to be passed down to future generations, so usually a teacher will pass their copy to their student, which brings us to today. Whoa. Hearing that is also making Paimon feel a little nervous. Yes, but the thought of having you two by my side somehow makes me feel a lot better. We won't let Uncle New down, right? That's right! Let's go and find him together! Ta 
Time to go. Time to go. Afternoon, Uncle Noon. A surprise. Then you must be here to finally pick up the map. <sighs> you saw right through me, as always. Did you forget that you had mentioned these two to me before? The ones who went to the Night Kingdom with you. In some sense, you could say that you've already trusted each other with your lives. It's just that my feelings are a little complicated now. Huh? Do you think that I'm still not ready yet, Uncle New? No, I believe you are the best guide in your generation. It's just that I'm not ready yet. After all, the journey to the mysterious island is no easy feat for any guide of the people of the Springs. I'm still a little worried. Don't worry. With our help, Mualani will definitely be able to find the mysterious island. Yeah. This time, I'll definitely be able to prove that Ko'olo is no better than Uncle Nu. Don't misunderstand. Since you've made up your minds, I won't try to stop you. It's just... Please listen to your teacher's words once more, Mualani. Our mission as guides has never been to prove anything. There is only one thing we must do. Guide tourists safely to their destination. I understand, Uncle New. In that case, you may have the map. Also, take this with you. What is it? It's a talisman. Take good care of it. You must return it to me. Was this made with spinel fruit? Hmm. Right, which is precise. You really know me best. <sighs> All right, Traveler and Paimon, tomorrow we'll set off. Make sure you get some good rest tonight. Yay! Paimon can't wait for another adventure! the last link I have to the land of my birth. Wind Strider! Shut Traveler! Paimon! Over here! You're here, Mulani! Oh, and those strange scholars are here, too. Good morning, you two. Morning! So when are we leaving? <laughs> Seems you're as excited as a child before the start of our journey. I just want to get down to business as soon as possible. You know this is no leisurely spring stroll, so I hope we can all act a little more professional. Don't worry, I'm a very professional guide. <clears throat> our journey to the mysterious island has officially begun. First, do you all see the statue here? Uh-huh. It... Well, no, it's not a clue at all. He was the first chief of the people of the Springs who came back from the mysterious island and set up this place. It's a monument. The first thing we need to do before we set off is to touch the statue and pray to our ancestors. This will make our journey to the mysterious island smooth. Is there any theoretical basis to... A theoretical basis? No, but my teacher taught me it's an essential step before heading to the mysterious island. <sighs> Very good. You didn't try to argue with me over something that you aren't knowledgeable about. That's very professional of you. Sure, but since this practice doesn't have an empirical basis, I won't be able to include it in my thesis. Come on, everyone. Greetings to my ancestors. As your descendant, 
I'm about to follow in your footsteps and witness your accomplishments. Allow me to depart under your gaze and return under your protective watch. It really feels like we're about to embark on a great adventure! Now, please get ready. We're going to look for the first clue. Speaking of which, where should we look for the clue? As expected, the first clue is related to the Kohola source. When people from outside the tribe get a copy of the map, most can deduce that the first clue is related to the Kohola source. But they often end up looking in the wrong direction. When the first chief created the map, he left a special mark for this part. It's a code that the tribe uses to indicate a herd of them. So it'll be impossible to gain any leads from just finding one or two stray Koholosaurus. You're a real pro at this, Mulani. But according to the information I've been able to find, Koholosaurus don't like gathering as herd unless it's to compete for the hot springs. So let me tell you a secret that only a guide from the people of the springs would know. It so happens that wild Koholosaurus periodically gather in the valley up ahead. It's almost like how our tribe gathers together for festivals. Still, as soon as the season changes, the herd quickly disperses again. Unless you're a guide who's always running across Natlan, it would be very rare to ever witness such a thing. This is a thing? I need to note this down right away and include an explanation as a part of my thesis. According to what I've deciphered from the map, a clue is hidden deep in that valley. But to get there, won't we have to get through the herd of Koholosaurs? Hmm... We'll have to think of a way to sneak past without startling them. They're gathering together with their friends, so I'm sure they don't want to be disturbed. You mean we're going to have to walk through the Colosaur herd? <clears throat> Given we've agreed to work together, everyone should do their part. However, Karia has been attacked, but it shouldn't be a problem at all for me. <laughs> no worries. We, don't we actually need someone to stay and look after the luggage, so we'll leave that to you two. Traveler, Paimon, please come with me. Is that so? Then that works out perfectly. And now I understand how much you care for your assistant scholar. Follow me and stay close. Oh no, we've been spotted. Let's back off and try again. These Koholosaurs sure seem on Kevin, you've already used the information provided by the map to deduce that the clue is in that valley. First of all, the elders of the tribe have always warned us to never hurt the Koholosaurs. Doing so will almost certainly bring bad luck. And secondly, you can't just show up and intrude on others' gatherings, much less make them leave. That's just terrible. But on what basis? Okay, so can we figure out another way to enter the valley? <sighs> there must be a way to enter the valley without startling them. It'd take a while for me to come up with a solution on my own, so I'd like to ask everyone to help come up with some idea. Let Paimon think. Oh, is there a detour or another way around? According to the map, the clue is right in the middle of the Koholosaur herd. Even if we try- Hmm, this is tricky. Karia, I've noticed that you only talk when you're trying to help smooth things over between Varamdra and the others. I'm sure you must have some ideas of your own, so why don't you share them with- Me? All right. When Varamdra decided to look for leads on the Koholosaurs, I wanted to help. 
And so I also looked up some information about the creatures. I discovered something very interesting. We thought that the Koholosaurs relied on their hearing to track their... But I'm not sure... Oh. Oh. You can just call me Kari. In that case, please stay here and keep an eye on the luggage. to making our way through the herd. If the Koholosaurs have a keen sense of smell, then even if we try to sneak around and stay out of sight, they'll still notice us once we get close enough. But this plant can help us solve that problem because its fragrance is very similar to the scent of a Koholosaur. We can apply the plant's extract to our bodies and trick their sense. So we're gonna rub plant you? Don't worry, it's also good for your skin. Oh, Paimon feels all wet and slimy. But perfect. Okay. Be sure to stay out of sight. What's that sound? Careful! Oh, it's just a young Koholosaur. Don't worry, this little one doesn't pose any danger. There be so many here. We can't get through. Oh, I have an idea. Wait here. start to get boring, they gather together and talk about something fun? <laughs> Too bad. Uh, but Paimon thought guides from- Sounds like someone has been trying to trick you. True, they were definitely trying to scam us. Uh, huh? Do you see that on the rock? It looks like some kind of drawing. I've heard that there is a type of moss that changes color when it reacts to the biological signals released by Koholosaurs. But to trigger that sort of reaction, you'd need a huge number of Koholosaurus. That must be the clue! Should we take a picture? Oh, the flash might disturb them. Let me... So we've passed the first stage of the journey now, right? I see. Had we chosen to drive the Koholosaurus off, then we never would have found this lead. Seems there was a logical basis for everything you said after all. Has he always been this way, Miss Karia? He's just obsessed with his research. That's all. At least this has shown that my judgment is correct. I've proven my trustworthiness. And so, there should be no need for us to argue next time. Yes, I understand. And I suppose that'll help us avoid wasting time. Ooh, Amani really knows how to lead our group. Next, we'll need to use the lead we found to uncover our next destination. Now, what does this pattern represent? Hard to tell. Paimon certainly doesn't have any idea what it's trying to get at. Aha! I got it. Though the lines are kind of rough, I can still see that they represent the boundaries between the water and the land at Jade Skirt Knoll. We can you find our next destination. Really? You got all that just from some rough lines? 
Well, intuition is also a part of it. Maybe I've just seen too many maps as a guide, and now it's easier for me to pick up on patterns like that. All right, break time is over. Let's get ready to move. completely sure yet. The map seems to indicate there's a mechanism here that crosses the water. But I still need to think about what these lines might be referring to. I knew it! My theory was correct! Sounds like he's got something to say again. If you have any suggestions, then please feel free to share. I believe the mechanism that the lines are indicating is a spirit way. Hmm, that is a possibility. But I don't remember anyone from the tribe setting up a spirit door around here. According to my theory, it might not have been set up by humans. The dragons living in Natlan also used a similar device, long before the humans. Speaking of which, the spirit doors your tribe uses may have been built imitating the dragon ones. Oh, I remember now. After learning about the legend, I realized that it was connected to my research. And so, I looked up a lot of related information. Even though I haven't found an exact route to the mysterious island, I'm fairly certain I've deduced the geographical features of the island's surrounding areas. Firstly, it's at an intersection between water and land. And secondly, there should be a high concentration of phlogiston. My research indicates that the Spirit Way was originally a natural phenomenon caused by the flow of phlogiston. Therefore, the area must contain many potential Spirit Ways, and the dragons who lived here in ancient times may have left behind some devices to control them. Oh, amazing! Now it all makes sense. Now everyone's contributing to the team. <clears throat> you flatter me. If my theory is correct, we should already be very close to the mysterious island. Once you've unlocked the mechanism, we'll be able to derive the island's location. All right. Then let's start searching for the dragon's spirit door. That's just a quick and easy name. I won't be able to include it in my thesis. Given the dragons used the device long before the humans, we should stick with a name that references no human concepts. Calling it a phlogiston node would be much more appropriate. Uh, then... Let's start searching for the phlogiston node. Speaking of which, what does it look like exactly? If I'm not mistaken... Look that way! Whoa! It started glowing! Looks like we can activate it once we get close enough. The light does remind me of a spirit way, but according to the map, there should be two more phlogiston nodes. Let's finish this fast!
there. everyone. Okay, now first, we need to figure out how to control this thing. Hmm. Yeah, its qualities are very similar to that of a man-made device, but it doesn't seem as intuitive to me. Is there something wrong? See, look at this. After activating a normal spirit door, we could just go ahead and use it. But this one requires someone to stay and keep operating it here. Also, according to the map, we need to activate the mechanism and switch between different phlogiston nodes to change the path of the spirit way. If we don't operate the nodes properly, then the people on the spirit way will come tumbling from the sky. Isn't that super dangerous? In theory, the process should be very safe, but only if the three phlogiston nodes are each being operated by someone. Do you think you'd be able to operate it? I just tried, and it clearly requires more skill than a typical spirit door. Though I've never tried before, I've read a lot of information and theoretically should be able to properly control it. Let me... Huh? But in the... If Varandra can't control it, then that also... Okay, well... After all the adventures he's been on, handling something like this should be easy peasy! All right, then it'll be up to the Traveler to stay. I'll let you know when we need to switch nodes. Just make sure you quickly head to the corresponding node, and we should make it safely. Wait, but handling it this way... Don't worry. It looks like the spirit ways are all above the water. I'm pretty good at swimming, so I'm not afraid if I end up falling. But it's so high! And you'll be falling so fast! If Do you still remember the promise we made before we left? Only those who can trust each other with their lives can reach the mysterious island. Since you two are willing to trust me... Alrighty. Please be careful.
Traveler, get to the next node! Got it! Paimon heard Mulani shouting just now. Let's go find the node we need! Mulani, we've taken care of the final node! Please be careful! Perfect. You were amazing, Mulani! There were a couple of moments Paimon thought it was over. <laughs> I'm confident I could do it all over again. Wait. Oh no, you're right! It appears the Phlogista nodes here need to automatically reach up. In that case, no matter what happens next, we have to seize our chance. Otherwise, who knows how long we'll have to wait for another shot. Do you hear that? The weather's getting gloomy, and a bunch of whirlpools just appeared in the water! Yes, we need to get to higher ground and take a look. Hey, look over there! Whoa, there's a giant whirlpool over there! Yep, and that's our next stop. The info I deciphered from the map points to only one possibility. To reach the mysterious island, we must enter that massive whirlpool. No way! Forgive me for being frank, but as a guide of the people of the springs, I'm sure you understand the danger of such a vort- Yes, I know. But whether it's the information deciphered from the map, or the direction of the spirit way that I observed in the air, everything points to the path ahead being hidden in that whirlpool. And what if you're wrong? Parandra... I... Uh... I'm not trying to be unreasonable. Unfortunately, I'm very knowledgeable in this area. The spirit ways must have affected the nearby bodies of water and low the water level. That's why the whirlpools appeared. At this rate, some of the land that was once underwater will soon reappear at the surface and see the light of day again. Don't you think that sounds more like the definition of a mysterious island? So, our goal should be the shallow waters. If we enter that vortex, the undercurrents will drag us to the bottom. Uh, does seem to have a point. I can't find any evidence to refute your claim for the moment, but I still trust my judgment. Then it seems like it's time for our collaboration to come to an end. I have reached this conclusion based on my field of expertise, and I cannot deny it, even if you try to convince me otherwise. From now on, let us each choose our own way. No, I refuse. You? Letting your clients separate themselves from the group in the middle of a journey will result in the worst luck possible. I will not agree to that. Then we can implement the plan I proposed at the very beginning. You're not my guide, and as such, you don't have to take responsibility for me! Oh, but you can't do that once you've traveled together as a group! If you were to leave now, we'll all be hit with bad luck! It's now beyond both our control! How about this? You and Karia wait here. We'll go first and investigate the whirlpool. I know you like to explain everything with theories and logic, so let me build my case first, and then I'll come back to convince you. Well, um... Traveler, Paimon, let's get going. <laughs> 